Hey everyone, Wes here for Family Gamer TV and today we're going to look in depth at Disney Infinity 2.0, talk about everything we know, everything that's been revealed at E3, all the details, all the good stuff for you. So, first off the bat, pretty much nailed on confirmation now, release date September 23rd. So, hopefully this game is only a few months away now and it looks like it's going to release ahead of Skylanders Trap Team. Also worth bearing in mind is the date of November 4th. It looks like we're going to get a second wave of figures around that time, probably including Disney characters. So what are we going to get on September the 23rd? Well, you'll be able to buy the Marvel starter set, which features Iron Man, Thor, Black Widow, and a couple of toy box games, and we'll talk about those a little later on. Along with that, Sony have managed to acquire an exclusive starter set of their own, so you'll get the Marvel Collector's Edition, same date, Iron Man, Thor, Black Widow, and two toy box games, plus you'll also get Hulk, who is exclusive to that set for 30 days after launch and you also get a large light up diorama which can display all of the Avengers figures that you can get. Uh, it also has kind of like a big monster type thing on it. We don't have any high res images of that yet but we will bring them to you as soon as we get them. Now as I mentioned this November 4th date Looks like we're going to get some Disney Originals figures and a Disney Originals starter set on that date. Now, we don't have any other details beyond a listing on, I think it was Walmart's site, for this starter set. We've also been told that there will be a digital upgrade for the toy box. So, if you just wanted to go with the toy box, we weren't interested in the Marvel angle, or any new play sets, etc. You could upgrade your toy box from 1.0 to 2.0 digitally. No idea how much that will cost or when that will be available. So what figures are we going to get beyond those I've already listed? So, confirm Marvel characters. Iron Man, Thor, Black Widow, Captain America, Nick Fury and Hulk, Hawkeye. Beyond that we also get Spider-Man, Nova, Venom and Iron Fist. Also, and possibly even bigger news, confirmation via a whole lineup image that includes Star-Lord, Groot, Rocket Raccoon, Drax and Gamora. And who are they? Well, if you're not familiar with them, they are the Guardians of the Galaxy and obviously that film launches later this summer. So you'll have those characters to go along with it. Now we're talking Disney characters. So we've had confirmation already of Maleficent and Merida who will both be toy box only figures. On top of those we're going to get Hero and Baymax from Big Hero 6, another Marvel feature that launches this year. But what about classic Disney characters? Well as we suspected we will get Stitch and also Donald Duck, Tinkerbell and a crystal version of Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey and all those have been confirmed by the Walmart leak. So when are we going to get them? Okay, on September 23rd we expect to have all those Marvel Avengers characters plus the Spider-Man characters. Somewhere between this first wave and November the 4th we expect to see Hulk he is supposed to be only exclusive for 30 days, so you should be able to get him in October sometime. Then on November the 4th, we expect to get the Guardians of the Galaxy characters, plus Maleficent, Merida, Donald Duck, Hero, and Baymax. Then sometime in December, probably around December the 5th, we're expecting the Crystal version of Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey. Now, is that all we're going to get for Disney Infinity 2.0? I'm not sure. I think we might get a few more in 2015. Uh, we did get Phineas and Ferb quite late in the day for 1.0, so I wouldn't be surprised if we get a few more next year too. But what about the characters in-game? What can they and can't they do? Well, for a start, all of your 1.0 characters work in 
that was kind of a given, but we've got confirmation of that. 2.0 characters will not work in 1.0 though, so you are going to have to upgrade if you want to get access to all these cool new Marvel characters and all these new Disney characters too. Now all of the 2.0 characters, whether they be Marvel or Disney, do have access to this brand new skill tree. Now everybody's skill tree belongs to a base type, whether that might be uh, someone who does ranged attacks, someone who's more of a melee person, uh, someone who's more physical. So they all have this base type and from there they're each customized per character with signature moves. So we've seen uh, Merida has like a super fast uh, multiple arrow shot thing that she can do which is pretty cool. And all of these upgrades on the skill tree are always available so it's not like Skylanders where you choose one branch and the other branch gets closed off you can get access to everything eventually for your character but along the way you get to customize them the way you want to start with so what else characters no longer come with a toy box adventure in 2.0 so we're losing that feature from 1.0 but we now have the toy box games to compensate for that all 1.0 characters will also get access to the skill tree system but only the ability to boost basic stats and occasionally add additional combos. So I think the difference here is you're not gonna get those special skill moves for each character. You're just gonna get the kind of basic skill tree upgrades which do things like improve speed and improve st strength and those kind of things. All characters though will have a higher level cap, now up to level 20. And characters also come with unlockable toys appropriate for them plus a set of feats that are specific to each character, some of which are available via the toy box and some via the play sets. We don't have a lot of details on that though at this moment. Now, if you in-game use your characters and you uh, defeat enemies, etc., you'll generate a set of varied colored sparks. Now the purple sparks are used to power up special abilities in your character. And we've seen with Captain America specifically, he has this kind of disc throw that he can do where he sends his shield out around himself in a circle to take out all the bad guys. The orange sparks you see, you can collect to give a boost to your XP that you would normally earn through combat. And one other thing about playing with characters specifically in the playset is if they run out of life, while you're playing in a place, they're, they're kind of KO'd for a period of time. So you can't swap in and out with those characters until they've recovered. And one bit of information specific to a certain character. Nick Fury, played by Samuel L. Jackson in the movies, is voiced by Samuel L. Jackson in the game too. So that's an extra incentive for owning that figure. Be interesting to see if we have any more characters voiced by famous actors from the films. Would be great to get Andrew Garfield voicing Spider-Man. But we'll have to wait and see if there's any more information on that. Okay, time to talk power discs. What types of power discs might we get this time out? Well, we've already mentioned toy box games, and yes, you'll be able to buy those individually, and you'll also get two of those in the starter set. And we've seen in previous videos uh, that one of the power discs that you get for these toy box games will be a Thor themed toy box game which is a tower defense style game. There's also a kind of more top down RPG kind of action game that's available in the starter set and obviously we'll get other variations to released at retail. One of the things that caught my eye the most though was the costume power discs. So for both Marvel and Disney characters, we will get costume discs that change their appearance in the game. So rather than uh, Skylanders for example, where you have to buy a whole new figure in a whole new costume, here you can just get an accessory and that changes how they look in the game. And we've seen examples like uh, Captain America's movie uniform, which is uh, looking pretty spiffy. Uh, possibly my favorite was a black suit Spider-Man uh, which changes obviously from the 
regular red and blue into a more venom looking black suit. Then you've got Grey Hulk, which to be honest, he looks a little bit green. I'm not sure whether the Grey Hulk has that tinge of green to him, but still looking cool. And I think possibly you can get a Red Hulk suit as well. We don't have any footage of that yet. And of course, Iron Man. If you're going to give costumes to anyone, then Iron Man is the one to go with because how many suits does he have? He has bajillions. So we've seen the Iron Man Mark 42 armor in action. Uh, obviously their standard armor with a little bit more gold on there to look a bit more like a blinged up Iron Man. Um, I'm sure he wouldn't appreciate being called that. Now, other discs. Well, we've got team up discs. Now these team up discs summon a supporting character to assist you. It's not instant though, so it doesn't appear the minute you put it down, it starts a timer. And when that timer runs out, the character joins you in the game and can fight against enemies on your behalf. And we can see that with the Winter Soldier, who's a team up character for Captain America. Although I think it's not specific to certain characters, you can bring them in whoever you've got going in the game at that particular moment. So interesting to see what other team ups we get. Uh, which ones would you like to see? Leave us a comment. See, uh, let us know what team ups you want to see in the game. Maybe you want uh, someone to come and help Spider Man. Maybe we can have Spider Woman in there to come and work alongside Spider Man. Or maybe we can get some team ups for the Incredibles. Maybe we can get Frozone in there to help uh, Mr. Incredible. Also, we've got event power discs. And these summon a special powerful event that can be unleashed. Uh, we've seen the shield helicarrier strike in action, which again, not instant and works on a timer, but causes massive devastation to help you out if you're in a tight spot. And there will be two power discs per character this time out. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what the variations are on those. Next up, let's talk about the toy box. And as we mentioned, there will be a digital only upgrade from 1.0 to 2.0, and that'll be available just for the toy box, remember, not for the play sets as well. Uh, but your 1.0 toy boxes can be imported into 2.0, and now you can actually string toy boxes together by using doors. So that's kind of neat. You can almost build up your own like multi level game using doors. Beyond that, there are now creator characters which can be deployed in the toy box and these create specific elements but they do it procedurally and automatically. So you can drop down a creator that will build a tree house for you and every time you put it down it will be different and they'll go off and they'll construct this huge tree house that you can then edit. There's one for castles too and other pieces of the environment that you might want to build and all of them are editable and all of them are unique. On top of that, we also have builder characters. Now these builder characters are all of various different types and they can be deployed in your toy box to add a variety of components around the toy box. This might be greenery and shrubs and trees, or it might be uh, buildings. Anything you can think of, we're gonna have builder characters to handle that kind of stuff and just add a bit of variety automatically to your toy box. Now you can earn toy box toys through the play sets uh, or you can buy them in a toy shop with the sparks you collect. This time out there is no spin wheel so no randomization you, you don't go through the game earning loads of stuff and then have to spend it to get something random. Now you can go and buy what you want. And in addition to that, your toy boxes can now be shared directly with friends rather than having to go via Disney's curation. So Disney don't have to look over your toy box anymore. If you've got some on your friends list, you can share directly with them. And something we haven't had a lot of detail on yet that looks really, really cool, you'll be able to build interior spaces for buildings. So you can explore and decorate the interiors rather than just the exteriors and I think when we see more details of this I think this is gonna be a really popular feature okay let's talk these toy box games so toy box games what are they what can you do with them well 
many people complain that you can't play as certain characters in certain play sets. So the play sets are of a particular Disney universe and you have to use characters from that universe in that play set. That to me is a bit boring. I've got to say, it it's not very fun. It kind of limits the, the joy that you get from playing the play sets and limits the desire of kids to play them, I think. So instead of fixing that, Disney have instead introduced a new way to play games inside the toy box. So they've added these toy box games which are pre-configured games of various genre types. So we mentioned previously a tower defense. There's also the dungeon crawl game. Uh, I think you're going to get like a racing game as well uh, and other various different games. And these are just dropped in your toy box and then everybody can play them doesn't matter whether you're teaming up Rapunzel with Mr. Incredible or with Captain America whoever it is they can go in these games and play them together now that I think is going to be hugely popular I think it's a smart move I'm still disappointed that you can't for example take Mr. Incredible into the Avengers playset uh, I know there are some kind of restrictions that would need to be in place with the non bipedal characters but this at least gives us something a bit more meaty to do in the toy box. Also, a new addition for the play sets is the ability to have certain characters cross over between them. Now, at the moment, this is just limited to the Marvel play sets, and so you can see Nova and Iron Man can cross over between the Spider Man play set and the Marvel Avengers play set. This is going to be limited to certain characters only and we have a heavy suspicion that Nick Fury will be able to cross over to as well as plenty more characters yet to be announced. We don't know yet whether Disney characters will get this feature too but it'd be kind of nice to see that happen. I'm still hankering to have the Incredibles join the Marvel team but maybe one day. Now you can also use your 1.0 playsets in 2.0 but they don't work the same way. You can't play through the adventures, but what you can do is import all the toys you've earned from those play sets into 2.0. And as before, as you complete things in the play sets, you unlock content to use in the toy box. Now, let's talk platforms. What systems is Disney Infinity 2.0 going to be available for, and which ones isn't it? Well, unfortunately for Nintendo Wii owners, you're out of luck this year. Disney Infinity 2.0 will not be coming to the Nintendo Wii, and it will not be coming to the 3DS either, unfortunately. However, if you're a mobile gamer, you still have a chance. Disney Infinity 2.0 has been announced for the PlayStation Vita, and in turn it will also be available for the Vita TV, uh, which is the kind of home version of the Vita that plugs into your TV and that's going to be out later this year I believe in Europe and America it's also already out in Japan now Disney Infinity 2.0 will also be coming to all of the current and last gen consoles that we haven't already mentioned uh, and I think PC 2 although I'm not 100% on that one now your existing Infinity bases work on all platforms except the Xbox One that requires a new base and I think they're all interchangeable I think they're like a standard USB connection for pretty much all platforms except for the Xbox One so that's pretty much everything we know at the moment about Disney Infinity 2.0 we have some other little rumors going around but we won't talk about those at this point and of course when we do get more concrete information, we will share it to you as soon as we possibly can. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the latest updates. Also, leave us a comment. Let us know if we missed a little bit of information. And also, what are you interested in? Which characters do you want to see? Which ones are you going to buy first? Uh, are you just going to do the upgrade for the toy box? You're not going to bother with the starter sets. Is that where you get your enjoyment from Disney Infinity?